So what exactly does it look like to be a culturally competent teacher? Um, as educators, um, one thing that we'll see and um, really deal with with our students is, you know, we're going to have a lot of students from various backgrounds, various cultures, um, with a ton of diversity um, in the classroom. I mean, some places, you know, whether you be in the inner city or a more rural area, um, you may not experience this as much, but this is definitely something that um, I think is really going to help us as educators um, and future educators learning. Um, for me, it's really understanding um, their cultures, um, different maybe traditions and values that these students may have, um, even maybe their behaviors because of these. Um, I think a big part here is not having any bias or implicit bias based off of um, some predetermined notions that you may think a student will have or may have um, based on these cultures. Um, and I feel like it's really, ev uh, maybe not evident, but I feel like it's really important as educators that we meet these students where, where they are um, and also understand that, you know, just because somebody may come from one place or um, one culture or one background, you know, they aren't going to act in a certain way and always educating not only myself but also my peers and you know the students that I have in my class on some of these predetermined notions and um, making sure that you know you meet your students where they are. Um, where do you see yourself on the cultural competency continuum chart and why? Um, I think I'm somewhere in between a four and a five um, on the chart. Um, I'm currently a high school baseball coach and I also do travel with I mean at ages from seven all the way up to 18 and I think that's something that's definitely um, gotten me ready um, for my future teaching career, um, I have players and kids and even parents and families, you know, that are from various cultures, different backgrounds, um, different income levels. And I, I definitely think that um, being able to be there for these kids, regardless of um, where they come from or who they are um, or where their social class is, um, is probably one of my strengths. Um, about three or four years ago, I took a, a group of middle and high school students um, to the Dominican Republic on a mission trip. Um, these students were from low income inner city areas. Um, the, tri the trip was completely funded and um, one of my really, really great buddies, Brent Slade, um, works for South Side of Atlanta, um, FCA, Urban Baseball. and. Um, Although those kids didn't look like me and came from different backgrounds than me, you know, I grew up in a small rural town and they're from the city and um, I was able to meet those kids where they were and show them love and, and show them God's grace while I was there and also, you know, meet a bunch of different kids and families in the Dominican Republic and serve them and be there for them. Um, one hot topic right now um, among K-12 through education is kind of the transgender stuff that's going on. Um, and I think these transgender students and children should be able to um, go by their their identities of who they you know, of who they are, and I think they should be able to go. I mean, whether it be um, a student that now identifies as a male, he should be able to go into the men's bathroom, or if it's a, a student that identifies as a girl, she should be able to use the girls' bathroom. I think the biggest thing um, for me to continue to deepen my cultural confidence um, and get to that next step is really just continuing to educate myself. Um, I am by no means um, somebody that knows everything, obviously, about everything or everyone. Um, and that's something that I need to continue to work on and strive to get better at. Um, and this is really something that um, I didn't really grow up with, I guess I'd say. Um, my school predominantly, um, my high school at least, a lot of students were like me and uh, looked like me and came from the same background, obviously, because we were from the same small town. And when I went off to college, I actually went to Savannah State University to play ball, and that is actually a historically black university. And when I got there, um, I was one of like maybe 30, 40 white students in the entire school. And it was kind of eye-opening, to be honest, at first. But kind of as the semester went on, um, I learned a lot about various cultures. And that was something, you know, in some of my, whether it be my historically, um, you know, my, my history classes or even my critical thinking classes, kind of expanding my way of thinking um, was something that was really important there. And one thing that was really important to me is that my teachers and my friends, my educators, they accepted me for who I was. And um, obviously I did as well, you know, but um, it's something that I think really helped me um, along this journey. It's definitely something that I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my teaching career and the rest of my life. I think that um, reading diverse literature, um, whether it be um, 
different religious texts or um, just people that have various backgrounds than me or um, different cultures than me are going to be a huge tool in um, expanding my knowledge on it. And really, um, my entire cultural capacity or competency. Um, I think literature is really a major tool. Um, and even sitting down and having conversations with people. Um, for example, my fiance's dad is Jewish. And um, coming from a Christian background and maybe not understanding his views as much um, or why he has the views that he does um, was definitely something that's kind of opened my eyes. And um, we've sat down and had the conversation before. And I think just the 10 to 15 maybe minutes that we talked about it, it really expanded my horizons on kind of what Judaism looked like. And... Um, why people, why people think the way they do about certain various religions. I believe that um, culture inclusivity um, is a huge part um, and something that I'm really gonna value um, in my future classroom. Um, I remember I went to Montessori schools when I was growing up and we did um, culture days um, where we'd have you know, students from different various backgrounds um, would bring foods, quote unquote, from around the world. Um, and I definitely think that was something that I'd like to incorporate in my own classroom one day, um, which will look a little bit different for me because I'm a special ed teacher um, or soon to be special ed teacher for that matter. And I'm not going to really have my own classroom per se. Um, I'm going to kind of be bouncing around. Um, but I think having conversations with, you know, the main teachers, um, they're teaching the classes. I'm going to be a you know a future co-teacher. I think that, um, whether it be through via signs up or um, you know various texts that are in the classroom, um, obviously school approved texts, but various texts that are in the classroom, um, it's something that really important and it's really important to me that um, supports acceptance, you know, to various cultural um, backgrounds, cultural diversity, um, and really the biggest thing to me um, is just showing respect. Um, to these different individuals in the classroom and whether that be from me to the students or my peers to the students or even you know the kids to my students that's definitely something I'm going to demand um, in my classroom is the respect for these students and I think one of my biggest goals as an educator just based off of my background is going to be um, working with these students and ensuring that you know any of any bias or implicit bias that they may have coming into my classroom um, it's something that can be worked through, um, and really my goal, um, and I know it's not going to happen for every student, um, but my main goal is to meet the students where they are and show them God's grace, um, and show them the love that God has in my life and um, how he's loved me. You know, I'm a sinner and I fail every day, but being able to show the students that, you know, there's somebody that cares about them genuinely um, and wants the best for them, I think is something that you know, it's really going to really, really important to me. And I think something that I value over everything else. And, um, I truly believe that God, there is a, ca a calling in my life to be an educator and to be a coach. Um, and I think something that, you know, is quote unquote, maybe a chameleon to me. Um, I had somebody when I was at Savannah state tell me that I was kind of, I, I almost was like a chameleon and I could fit in with whoever I was with. Um, and I think that's something I'm going to try to give in the classroom and try to show my students and try to help my students bring them along in that. Um, so thanks so much.